Hey, howdy y'all, it's Frightman, and I'm just sitting here in the graveyard hanging out. And I have a question for you. When you think of graveyards and you think of fog, do you want your fog to look like this? I don't. Well, I prefer my fog to be super creepy and super low lying. And today, I'm gonna show you how I made a fog chiller. We're going to be taking this box and turning it into a fog chiller for my Halloween display. Now, if you've used a fog machine before, you know that a fog machine creates the fog. It heats it up and of course heat rises. So when that fog comes out of your fog machine, it just goes up and becomes a cloud. But we all like that fantastic, beautiful, low lying fog that we see in a cemetery scene. That's what we're going to do today. Let's get started. Most, if not all, ingredients will be listed down in the description of the video. So let me give a brief overview of what we're about to do. So this mister is from Amazon. This uses water to create a mist. This will be at the bottom of our bucket, which will be filled with distilled water, and that's going to fill up this box with mist, and it's a cool mist. So we're gonna also be creating a input port here for the fog to go in. We will have an export port over here for the fog to come out. We're also going to be using a controllable speed fan to push that fog out. I'm not sure if we're gonna need this, but I run my fog in a long hose throughout the yard. So I wanna make sure that it has enough um, energy to push throughout that push the fog down through that hose and spread it all across the yard. So first we're gonna be creating a splash guard for the water. Freeze! Okay, so I had to re-record this part of the video over. We talk about a splash guard in the video. We don't need this, I'm cutting that part out. So if you see this in the video later on, don't worry about it, you don't need it. Also, you'll notice on the box itself, there's these little black dots that you'll see and I don't talk about those, don't worry about it. It was part of the splash guard. You don't need those. I'm going to save you time from having to watch me build it and I'm going to save you money because you don't need it. Now let's get back to the build. So when this thing is sitting in the box, you can see here that the power cord is going to actually keep the lid from being able to be put on here, right? So it's going to make that lid stand up a little bit. You could probably get away with this if you wanted to, but I'm gonna go ahead and make it fancy, take my Dremel and just cut out about a little half inch square right here, just so that the lid can fit on nicely. So let's do that. So we just took out just a little tiny notch here so that when the um, mister is in the box, the cord can go ahead and sit here. So I think we're good there. Now our next step is going to be the uh, exhaust port with the fan, and then we're going to have the uh, import port over here. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a hole saw. I'm gonna actually be using two inch PVC to put into the box, and that's gonna be my input and my output. Now I'm using two inch PVC because the input for the fog machine, we really don't want that to be where the fog machine has to be touching anything because they get really hot. So I want to make it big enough to where it doesn't touch the fog nozzle. For the output, it's because of the fan. That fan has a big uh, port on it. And so I want to make sure that that has plenty of, um, plenty of room to pull out that fog out of this box. So when determining where you're going to put your intake and your exhaust, we want to do that as far away as possible because we want to give that fog plenty of time to react with this mist. So we're going to go far back here and we're going to go close up here. Now the fan has a grill right here on it and the grill is held by a couple of screws. They can be undone so the grill can be taken off, which is going to make this really simple. We're going to need to cut the hole here and then we're just going to use the Dremel to make two holes and then we're going to take the grill and put it on the inside. So let's go ahead and jump to that. I've elected to go ahead and put the lid on the box and secure it because that's going to give us a little bit more form here to hold it. Plus I want to make sure when we drill this hole here for that fan that we're not going to be hitting the lid. So I'll just take this fan actually and see how far down do we really need to go. Doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so I'll probably do it like this and put it at an angle. 
So we're looking at about right here. Wish me luck. hole saw drill bit is going to grab at some point it's going to grab onto that plastic if you're pushing too hard on that you're just going to crack your plastic all up so just be sure to go kind of slow there i've taken the grill off here are the two holes i'm going to go ahead and line that up on the front side so that i can mark this over on the back side so before we mount this fan one thing i do want to say i'm going to do is i'm going to also take my dremel and i'm just going to put a small hole right here at the bottom and the reason for that is when this thing is mounted here and it's sucking in all of that fog, that fog's gonna have a lot of liquid from this mister. And I don't want that liquid building inside the fan here. That's just going to cause us problems. So I'm just gonna use a very, very small hole right here just to allow that fluid to drip out of the fan when it builds up. So it's not gonna be anything special. It's not gonna be anything magical. It's just going to be a small hole. Again, I'm gonna take my time because I don't want to crack the plastic here. All right. So we have a little small drain hole on the fan now. I didn't do any damage to the fan, yay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hold the fan to the outside of the box here. And I wanna mark where the two screws go in on this fan okay we got those markings done and now we're going to go ahead and use the dremel to go ahead and poke those holes out of this plastic box here flip it on the side here like this take the dremel again through plastic you want to make sure that you go pretty slow don't have it at high speed and don't put a lot of pressure all right one is down and number two and two's down so we're ready to go ahead and mount that fan onto the box so we're going to take the fan we're going to do like this we have the grill here we have our two screws and our two nuts that are going to secure that right onto the box once we get these nuts on these two bolts um, the bolt, the uh, screws themselves have Phillips heads. We're going to go into the inside of the box here and we are going to tighten up those two Phillips screws so that this fan will be on here nice and tight. Let's go ahead and go in here and tighten up these two screws. Okay, we got one and we have two. So the fan is nice and secured onto the box here now. <clears throat> Again, this is a variable speed fan. It's gonna be pretty cheap on Amazon, 10 bucks. Do I need it? I don't know yet, but we're gonna find out. It is a DC fan. In other words, it's uh, if you don't know what DC is, that means it would run off of like a battery, uh, but this does have an adapter to plug into the wall. That's important. You don't want to use an AC fan because an AC fan would have 120 volts going through it. And as moisture builds up, uh, we don't want to take the risk of shocking you. So if you decide to go with the fan and not go with the fan that I'm using, make sure that you use a DC fan. So I'm really happy how this is going along. We have one more tricky part and that is going to be our input. So on the input here, we're going to use two inch PVC and my goal is going to be to create a two inch hole here. We're gonna be sliding the two inch PVC into that hole. And then I have um, two fittings that we're going to use to secure that onto the box as well as down here to direct this to where we can put our uh, fog machine in place here. So let's go ahead and drill another two inch hole down. Um, we need to go above where that splash guard is. So I'm thinking probably right about here. So I'm going to use my good old Sharpie marker here to mark where I want to do this. So I'm planning to use the two fittings. So I'm going to have a small piece of PVC, cut that hole. This is going to go this way. This is going to go this way. So I really only need the hole to be able to support this piece of PVC. And I'm making sure that I am not on the fan side and I am not so let me go ahead and mark that out. Okay. 
Well, that went pretty nice and smooth. So now we have that two inch hole here in the box and we're ready to go ahead and install, install our PVC. But first we're gonna have to cut this down and we're gonna need that to be cut to where a piece of PVC will fit on the inside, a piece will fit on the outside. So um, just using uh, eyesight here, it looks like it's probably two inches, but I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with the Sharpie. So we have that cut PVC in one of these fittings. Slide that right into the hole, take the other fitting, put those two together. And we are aiming those down, and that's gonna help keep the moisture from building up inside of here and falling back into the box, which is good. This is, the bottom of this is just right above our water protection splash guard. So that's perfect. This is probably going to work out really, really good. So about right now, you're probably asking yourself, but wait, how is the fog gonna get in here? Well, we're gonna take care of that. So we're gonna take another piece of two inch PVC. We're gonna measure that to go down and we're going to use another fitting on the end of that so that the fog machine can just butt up right against it. Now, of course, fog machines have different heights, so it's not gonna be perfect with any particular fog machine. So you may need to use a brick or a board or something to raise your fog machine up a little bit. I'd rather have it a little high than a little low, right? Because I can't drop the fog machine down, but I can raise my fog machine up. So I'm just thinking something probably right around like this. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I don't think I really need to measure. Um, so let's go ahead and get the Sharpie here. And we are going to eyeball this right about here. So I have a mark here, gonna take that PVC pipe cutter again, and we're going to cut this piece out. Okay, so we're pretty close to getting this wrapped up. Now, remember I said I wasn't going to glue this, so this is very easy to move, but the nice part is, is I can actually take it off. So for cleaning purposes and everything, I have decided I'm not gonna glue it. The other reason why I don't wanna glue it is because this bottom nozzle, without gluing it, I can turn it any way I want. So if I wanna put the fog machine here, I can. If I wanna put the fog machine here, I can. So um, this is pretty good. Now it's a little loose up here at the top, but that's okay. Uh, it's not like something that's gonna get moved around a lot. And again, if I want to, I can move the nozzle that's inside the box this way or this way. The lid fits nice and clean. Everything looks good. So I wanna just say one other thing about the power supply for the fogger. This is a big, heavy power supply and it is not made for outdoors. So I just wanna warn you that if you do this and you have snow, as I know some of you do, or you have rain, you're gonna wanna put this in some type of uh, covering. You don't want this to get rained on because uh, it is not waterproof. And then the second thing that I did wanna tell you about is the fan. So um, actually, I think I left the control here in the box. Let's take a look. I did. All right, so the fan, again, I told you was a DC fan and it's a variable speed fan. So it's a really cool fan. I'm probably gonna buy a few more of these because uh, I think it was like $10. But you just have a, a control. So with this control, you can have it very slow. You can have it very fast. If it ends up being too fast, which we're gonna find out, then I'll probably remove the fan and I would just put another mechanism like this. But again, I think because I have such a large hose that I push out of, I think the fan's gonna be very good. Most cases at the very lowest speed is going to be enough. We got this guy packed up and we're gonna go out to the garage and let's give it a demo. So this is what the box looks like with just the mister. So no fans, no fog machine, it's just purely the mister. And you can see it makes quite a bit of mist. Um, that's a pretty strong, powerful mister. So let's take a practical look at how this looks in the backyard with a mock setup of a cemetery scene out here by my pond in the backyard. There is a little bit of wind that's causing some of that to rise, but all in all, it's hugging the ground pretty well and I'm pretty happy with the results. This is an American DJ fogger. It's a thousand watt fogger. I'll put a link to that as well. I'm very happy with this fogger. Uh, it has auto shut off so that if your fog fluid gets too low, it will automatically shut off. So here's a view with the fog coming out of the hose surrounding the pond. The fan is at high speed. 
it was required to use the fan because the fog wasn't making it through the hose. It is a little bit windy here, so it's picking the fog up off the ground pretty quickly, but you can get a general idea of how this would look coming throughout that hose. And of course, if it wasn't windy, then the effect would be, you know, 100% better. And for our final look at fog in action, we're going to look at the fog machine with the same weather conditions, but without a chiller, so you can determine if this project is worth it for you. So this is our 1000 watt fog machine without the chiller. Well, there's definitely no lay lying fog, and as you can see, it's rising pretty rapidly. So hopefully you see a significant difference. What worked and what didn't. So let's jump to that. First of all, not gluing the PVC was an excellent idea. And the reason that I say that is because everything stores perfectly in this box. And so it makes a great way just to store everything here. Number two, and it's a fail. It's <laughs> going to be this splash guard. So I spent so much time working on this splash guard and it was really a fail. Turns out that the material that I used, um, it really wasn't, um, what's a good word? It did, it, it's too dense. It didn't let the fog come through. And so that really affected my uh, low lying fog, not being able to blend with the mist because the mist wasn't coming through this. Not needed. So scratch this, take that off. Good news is, my mistake is your savings on the price of this project. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about is that fan. Now that fan is gone. What I found is with that fan and blowing that uh, fog out, it didn't really stay down low because it was just, even at the lowest uh, speed, that fan was just blowing it out too hard. I have not given up on that idea and I think it's still going to be a great idea uh, on Halloween with the long hose, but coming straight out of the box, you really don't need the fan. The fog creeps out here really nicely. And the good news about not needing that fan is, again, I just saved you money. So <laughs> this project is going down lower and lower on the cost. So that black hose around the pond, it didn't really work out that great. Now in the past, I've used a 600 watt machine with that and it was okay. I think the 1000 watt is just overdoing it. I'm still going to use that at Halloween, I suspect, but I'm going to go and make much bigger cuts into it and more cuts, and I think it's gonna turn out really well. So another improvement that I plan to do is to fix this lid. This lid uh, on top of that box, it doesn't really seal well, and I have a lot of the fog that's escaping all around the lid. I'm gonna be taking some weather stripping and some epoxy and going along the side of the inside of the lid here with that just to make this seal on that box a little bit better and prevent a lot of that fog from escaping where I don't want it to. I'd like to know down in the comments what you thought about this project. I personally am extremely excited about it. I cannot wait to use this on Halloween. Are you gonna build one? I'd like to know as well. Be sure to give my video a like if you like this type of content so I know that you do and I can make more of this. And uh, thanks for watching. And until next time, stay spooky, my friends. <laughs>